In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to get started with the new OpenAI real-time API. By the end of the video, you'll have an idea on how to set up this repo and begin to play around with an application and a potential idea that you might have for using the new capabilities with this real-time API. OpenAI's real-time API opens up a lot of possibilities for developers to create interactive applications. You can interact with it without even pressing any buttons like you would with potentially other applications that were out before this. And the interesting thing with this is, especially within the application, they really illustrate exactly how it works. The difference with this API is it's actually set up with WebSockets. If you look within the interface here, you see the client and the server here. You can see this number increment. That number incrementing is sending all of the little packets across the network of everything that I'm saying, that as soon as I stop talking, the network already has that whole payload that it can begin to process. That's really interesting. Using WebSockets for this API allows for real-time two-way interaction, which is great for applications that require instant updates. Now, the other cool thing with this application is it also demonstrates how you can use function calling. If I say something like, what's the weather in New York City? It sounds like you can trigger a function call to get the weather information for New York City. Would you like me to demonstrate by fetching the current weather there? Yes. The current temperature in New York is 17.4 degrees Celsius with a wind speed of 9.7 kilometers per hour. Now, the other thing that's really cool with this is you're able to have a stateful API. Before this, what we would have to do is we would have to continually send in the state of the chat completion, essentially the chat history of all of the different messages so that the LLM would have the context of what was previously discussed. But now, since it stores the state, you're able to say things like yes to the previous questions and it understand what it's talking about. If I say, what's the weather in Toronto, as well as set some memory for my grocery list tomorrow to pick up apples, bananas, and oranges. So we have the weather in Toronto, and then we also have this set memory function. This is a great starting off point in terms of starting to learn how to use this real-time API. One thing to know with this is that this application does still require additional steps if you're looking to deploy this. This is really going to be something where you're going to have to add some layer of authentication to be able to actually deploy something like this. And in an upcoming video, I also plan to show you how you can use something like this in a more production environment. If you're interested in that, just stay tuned to the channel. I hope to put that out over the coming week or two. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to git clone this repository. And then once we have it, I'll just go within the directory here. And then I'm just going to open up this within a new cursor workspace here. We'll open up our terminal. And what we can do from here is we can go ahead and pnpm or npm install everything. And while that's installing, what we can do is we can set up a .env. What we'll need is an OpenAI API key. So we can just OpenAI API key equals. And then to get your API key, you can just head on over to their platform. You can go to dashboard. And then on the left-hand side here, you'll see API keys. So once you have that, you can paste it in here. Now, the other thing that we're going to set up is a relay server. And this is going to be how the back end of our application communicates with the WebSocket connection from OpenAI. Here, we're going to set it to localhost 8081, but you can change this out to whatever your relay server is, or if you have it on a different port and what have you. Once you've saved that out, you can go and start the front end of your application. So you can npm start. There we go. We have our front end working. And then to run our back end, we can just pnpm run relay. And then we see it's listening on localhost 8081. And if I go back to our application, now that it's all wired up, we can test it out. We can click connect here. Hello, I'm here and sounds like you're testing the connection. Can you hear me okay? Set within memory to buy eggs tomorrow. All right, I've set a reminder for you to buy eggs. There you see that it does have the reminder within the DOM element there. And now if I ask, what's the weather in Chicago? It seems like I'm unable to retrieve the weather information right now. Would you like to try again later? The interesting thing with this that I have noticed is sometimes the function call output comes after the assistant has already responded. That's one thing to be mindful of with the WebSockets is sometimes the function invocations can take a little bit of time. And if it triggered to respond back, it might not have the context until I ask it again. So now if I ask, what's the weather in Chicago? 
The current weather in Chicago is around 17.9 degrees Celsius with a wind speed of about 10.6 kilometers per hour. That's just something to be mindful when building out your application. In terms of next steps, there is some good information within the README here. Within here, you'll be able to see how it's streaming back the audio, but probably more importantly, what a lot of people will be playing around with and setting is how to add their own function calling capability. Here is how we append tools to the WebSocket connection. And what you can do here is you can just establish with natural language what the function call is doing. And in this case, it's using a free no API to get the weather endpoint, and then it's returning that payload. In terms of next steps, this console page.tsx really has the lion's share of how all of this is set up and configured. There's quite a bit within here for managing the state within the application on the front end, maybe the WebSocket connections and all of that. Within the application, there's a couple pieces where I'd start to play around with this and swapping out maybe my own components or my own idea for a little application. I'd really encourage you to look at add tools. Within add tools, we have set memory and then we have the get weather function. It's pretty straightforward. So you can define your function definition with natural language here, all of the different properties. So whether there are any arguments that your function requires, and then the function itself, you see the example defined right within here. We're setting a memory KV within the get weather example. We're actually reaching out to the API, and then we're gonna be getting the location, the coordinates, and then we're ultimately gonna be getting the temperature as well as things like wind speed and what have you. Is these are a great starting off point. You can look for set memory. You can see what it's doing once it's returned. In this case, we're setting the memory KV here. If we just search for set memory KV, we see that memory KB, and you can just search through this. At a certain point, we'll see this within the JSX here. We see that JSON stringify, and that's going to be how it appeared on the screen here. But this could very well be a component that you pass in as props and render whatever it might be. Say if you have a financial ticker or something like that, if it's a financial app, you could just ask for what is Apple stock price, pass in, say, the AAPL ticker, and have it render a chart. This is just a super quick video on how to get set up with the new real-time API. If you found this video useful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Otherwise, until the next one.